Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare-certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. They're polite. I mean, they just take the time for you. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. I like the Angels for what they've done for me. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients. Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching and thanks as always to the producer of our series, Jeff Durall. We're in the conference room of the President's Office at Fort Hayes State University in Sheridan Hall with President Myrta Martin of Fort Hayes State University. The reason for the chuckle, I have to say, is because of the uh, accident with the phone, which is our <laughs> official timekeeper. Uh, we don't need to go into any further detail than that, but other than to say, oops, a little ouchie occurred with the, uh, with the timer and the phone, if you will. President Martin, thank you for taking the time, as always. Thank now, you. I have it on somewhat reliable sources that uh, here recently, in the last week or two, uh, several hundred people witnessed uh, the president with shovel in hand playing in the dirt. Now, would you confirm or deny that? Uh, Absolutely, I'd like to play in the dirt, and hopefully we'll be playing in the dirt about another seven or eight times. So absolutely, as a matter of fact, was, uh, I was not just playing in the dirt with a shovel, but um, I was playing in the dirt on my hands and knees, taking pictures along with uh, with students and actually alumni. Actually, down so and down, dirty. That's huh? right. And I could actually get up without help. That's a miracle. <laughs> that's in a hose good thing. and in a dress and in heels. That's Imagine a good that. Thing. Absolutely. We're <laughs> no. talking about the new themed housing complex at Fort Hayes State, the groundbreaking which occurred. And you mentioned that it was the beginning of a new era at Fort Hayes State is. University in your remarks. It is. You know, we um, last fall during homecoming, we broke ground for the Dangy Hansen uh, Scholarship Hole. Um, it will be a first of its kind in the United States, and it's really uh, all due to the generosity of the Dangy Hansen Foundation, to whom we are uh, very, very grateful. They have been incredible supporters of the university, and, and we are forever in their debt. Uh, I personally am forever in their debt for their confidence in our vision and in our future. Um, and, and that was the beginning of the first home. This is the second stage, and the reason it's the beginning of an era is twofold. One, uh, in the next three years, because of the 88 million dollars worth of new construction that's taking place on this campus, the footprint of Fort Hayes State University will change more than it has in the previous 100 years. You know, we, we talk about all the time since my arrival about new beginnings. Well, this is new beginnings for the footprint of the university. It's also the beginning of an era because the Greeks have been off campus for a while. And uh, this theme housing allows us the opportunity to bring them back home where they belong. Um, you know, Greeks, athletes, students at large, any time that I can bring students back home is a day to celebrate. Uh, and so bringing the Greeks back home was a day to celebrate. They, they add um, strength in scholarship, in leadership, in philanthropy. Um, they're by the football field, so hopefully they will become very well engaged in our athletics and be part of that. And, and what we want to do is to have all students, Greeks and independents and athletes and all students alike, to know that Fort Hay State is their home and that they're comfortable and happy on campus. So I'm thrilled to be able to build the first uh, facilities and hopefully uh, the other fraternities and sororities, um, once we open the incredible halls that we are going to be opening, they'll all rush back home where they belong. Well, and several of those uh, alums did uh, make remarks at uh, the uh, complex. Absolutely. The room for four groups of 24 students each, three Greek organizations now, Sigma Sigma Sigma, Delta Zeta, and uh, Sigma Phi Epsilon mm -hmm. will be uh, housed in that area, Correct. encouraging, as you say, President Martin, others uh, to uh, come, especially when they see 
the remarkable change in housing that occurs uh -huh. on campus for involvement. Well, all of that is, you know, that part of campus, that uh, student, the beginning of that student village, so to speak, is going to be phenomenal. You've got, of course, the Dane G. Hounsen, um Scholarship Hell. Uh, then next to it, as you well know, we, we have already started with the Weast Hall replacement, uh, which will be a state-of-the-art facility replacing the current Weast Hall. Um, it, it will be structured kind of in a, in, a, in, in a shape, almost like a horseshoe, designed so that each one of these areas could house a learning community. Again, all study shows that if people are joined together by an affinity, by something they like to do, regardless of major, it is more likely that they're going to stay on campus, that they're going to graduate. And if you remember, uh, way back when, it seems like way back when, in the fall for convocation, I challenge this university to shift from a culture of accepting students to a culture of completion. And so this is part of those steps of towards a cultural completion. The new dormitories um, will allow us, the, new, the, will, uh, the residence halls will allow us to create those learning communities so that the students stay in focus, that they stay in community. Um, so, so on that side, you've got the Dainty Hansen Scholarship Hall. You have the Wiest um, Hall replacement. Then you've got the two theme housing. You talk about a state-of-the-art facility at Fort Hay State University. And then, of course, as you well know, that's only the beginning. Then we come on this side of campus for the academic proper. And we begin, uh, we're getting ready to portion off the uh, um, parking lot that is almost across from the old power plant on that corner. That will become the new home to the uh, Department of Applied um, uh, sciences uh, of applied technology. Once that's up, then Davis Hall will come down, and in its place, then we're going to plan to build a three-story addition to the union, which will be a student success center, a one-stop shop. Again, all data suggests if we can keep the kids together, they're going to stay in school. So imagine as a parent, you come in, you know where to go, and you're gonna go there, then you are greeted by a smiling face of our student. They're giving you a tour. You decide, yes, Fort Hay State University is our destination of choice. You come back to this beautiful facility, then you get to speak to an academic uh, advisor who puts you in your courses, then you enroll at Fort Hays, you're here. You may be having a little bit of a problem, so you go back there, there's the tutoring, and there's the um, uh, uh, Kelly Center will be there, and the Wellness Center, and then as you grow and you're ready to graduate and you want to find that career, then the Career Center is there versus right now it's like well you need to go to the Kelly Center you need to go over there oh you need to go to Korea you need to come over here you need to go here you and somewhere along the way the kids get lost mm -hmm. you know because they're directionally challenged <laughs> I remember some of those <laughs> days as a matter of fact something is going right Fort Hayes State setting records regularly since the turn of the century an all-time record enrollment in spring semester 12,338 surpasses spring of 2015 by 449 students. Mm, Something's true. going right. Well, what's going right is the people of Fort Hay State. That's what's going right. You know, it's, um, these numbers don't happen by coincidence. They don't happen by mistake. They happen because of the hard work of the faculty, the staff, and even the students of Fort Hay State University, uh, the, the, the alumni, the people who we meet, the donors. You know, I have challenged them to uh, speak about Fort Hay State at least once a week. We've got 60 plus thousand alumni throughout the United States and the world. I'm meeting a lot of them and they're wonderful. Um, we've got close to 1,300 faculty and staff here. We've got close to 5,000 students on campus. I mean, imagine the power that one individual has over another one, especially these students. You know, they don't want to hear us, but they want to hear those students who were in that classroom not so long ago. So if they go back to their high schools and say, we love it here. Um, you know, we were just talking um, right before um, you came in with Diane O'Brien, and who says, by the way, hello. Um, and and um, 
uh, we have a student who was applying for Big Brothers, Big Sisters, etc., and and went through the interview. And she she was Diane was laughing because she came back and she said that this young woman had gotten feedback, and the feedback was. You didn't speak enough about yourself. All you spoke about was Fort Hay State. <laughs> what a wonderful thing. Um, that's why we're growing, because the people believe, because this is truly a magical place. Um, you know, the, 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 all of those things that brought me home to Fort Hay State are, are alive and well, and we see it, and people believe, and that's the biggest shift. People believe, and they're making it happen. Talk about uh, the partnership, <clears throat> if you would, with uh, the uh, transition for students with Cali County, for example, and the partnership with uh, Bangladesh and Davidil uh, University, would you? Certainly. Well, you know, part of the growth is, is how do we expand into new markets? How can we go ahead and tell the story of Fort Hay State and bring individuals here uh, because of our programs of distinction? Um, the community colleges have always played a very large role in creating an on-ramp to education for students, and I believe in that um, very strongly. As a matter of fact, when I came to Fort Hay State, I, tried, I, I met with most of the, president of the community colleges, and I said to them, I'm not after your freshmen, I'm after your juniors. Um, back in Virginia, we had, I had been a region, uh, and we had done a study, and what we found is that uh, Eighty-nine percent of the students who graduated from a community college graduated within two years from the senior institutions. Well, why? Because they've had an opportunity to be nurtured if they need a little bit of growing up by their parents. Um, it, for those who perhaps take longer, they have experienced that length of time. For those who are place-bound because they have other responsibilities, they have to help parents to put food on the table, they have to help with the farms, they have to do whatever. They've gotten that time and now they've, they've seen the light, they've experienced success, mm -hmm. they've tasted success, they understand that it's possible and so the next two years, come very, very quickly. And so uh, the partnership with Cali Community College, we have a, a young new president out there, Dennis Riddle, and um, he believes in creating seamless pathways, as, as I do. So this is important because we've created these program-to-program -program articulation agreements that if you go and you take these courses, you transfer to Fort Hay State um, without a glitch. You know, you and, and oftentimes uh, what occurs is that students kind of, they graduate, but then they go to another, to a senior institution, and they realize that, well, I took this course that didn't transfer, I took mm -hmm. this course that didn't go to my major. This is a seamless mm -hmm. pathway. So we're very, very happy uh, about and very honored to, this is the first of its kind. Uh, we have several programs, for example, in the School of, um, education that fit very well and they're designed so that we can put on site uh, individuals uh, going to um, the high schools or going to to um, the K through 12 system mm -hmm. so that they do their own practicum there they stay there they stay the two years there and then they stay in those communities and part of what we want to do at Fort Hay State is to attract the talent of Kansas and keep the talent of Kansas in Kansas. Um, whether it's in Hayes America or whether it is in Timbuktu, we want to keep it in here. And relationships and partnerships like what we've created uh, with Cowley is really the, the future. And the fact that it's a tiger to tiger partnership. They're tigers and we're tigers, so you have two tigers at each end of the state, so now we really command the entire state. The tiger nation is really overwhelming. In the same venue, the, um, the partnership with Daffodil University in Bangladesh uh, expands our footprint in the world. It's, it's the beginning of, um, of a new relationship outside of China. Um, we are not yet on site but we will begin to have the exchange program as well as online programs with uh, Bangladesh. And as this partnership continues, then obviously we will grow the partnership to a point where eventually we plan and we hope to be able to have an on-site program as we do in China. Again, all we're doing is, is expanding 
the wonderful programs that Fort Hay State University has under the, the creation of our faculty and, and the support of our staff throughout the world so that we can go ahead and then bring some of that investment back home to Kansas so that we can continue to educate the next generation of leaders at the Tiger Magical second most affordable tuition in the United States. President Myrta Martin from the conference room at Sheridan Hall will have more coming up on our Community Connection. Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. And the angel care nurse comes to see me once a week. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. Angel Care has helped to, to stay home. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients. Our community connection is with President Myrta Martin at Forte State University as we talk about uh, the application process which is underway now for the Doctor of Nursing Practice program. We're very excited about it. Um, you know, it is our very, very first doctoral program and uh, it's coming to bear because of the hard work of the faculty of that nursing department who um, looked to stay in tune with the changing times and the changing times require that doctoral uh, degree. And, um, and so it brings, first of all, the, it's, for a myriad of reasons it's important. One, because it's the very first doctoral degree here at Fort Hay State, uh, because it provides nurses a pathway to ensure their success in their chosen field. And, and we want to ensure that the programs that we provide at Fort Hay State are industry specific, they're, they're industry relevant, that they provide our students the opportunity to, when they graduate, go into their fields. And we're very proud of the fact that our numbers support the fact that we are indeed in tune with, with what's happening in the world. As you know, 95% of our graduates are employed uh, when they graduate. And that's, for a parent, that's important, but it's more important for that student to see that their time and their investment in that education pays off. It's, um, so we are accepting applications. Uh, we will have the inaugural class this uh, coming fall. Uh, and so we can, I can't wait to, to welcome these new souls that are going to be mavericks, that are going to be trendsetters, that are going to be pioneers in their own field at Fort Hay State. I'm also very uh, personally very uh, thankful to the, um, to the nursing department because in their willingness to look at what needed to be done to stay current and bringing thus the first doctoral program to Fort Hay State University, they afforded Fort Hayes an opportunity that we hadn't had in the previous 114 years. And that would be? And what do you think that would be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will have the honor to be able to award a honorary doctoral degree. And um, I am so very honored, so very privileged. Uh, they're, they're just, I'm sp I don't have words. You have it processed. Yeah, it. yeah you know, it. It, it just that we will, the very first recipient of the very first honorary degree, doctoral degree at Fort Hay State will be a Kansas hero, will be a Kansas son, somebody that, I've admired all my life, um, and I actually get to meet uh, in the sense of bestowing, I, I've met him before, but to bestow upon him uh, the title of Doctor of Arts and that Senator Bob Dole. And we, we are just so excited to have him home. We are just so excited. You know, there's, uh, there will be a second and a third and a fourth, and they're all important, but the first one I think is is incredibly important and the fact that we that uh, Senator Dole has honored us by being the keynote speaker at not just one commencement but at both commencement on Friday and Saturday and then that um, I have the privilege to be able to to grant him a the first honorary doctoral degree at Fort Hay State University is 
it's a dream that I would have never dared to dream. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very, very, very proud to welcome him home. And once the particulars are in place, we'll be visiting again right before the commencement weekend takes place. So that Absolutely. will be an exciting time. There's yes, no doubt be. about that. Yes, it will be. With the, the worldwide fame and acclaim that Robert Dole has had and a Fort Hayes State supporter from a long, from, long time. From the, you know, he, um, but it's, it, it speaks volumes about the gentleman that he is. You know, I, I first met him um, in person where I could touch him um, when I first came to Fort Hayes and we dedicated uh, the Dole Sisters Lobby. And what was very telling was that this gentleman who gave money didn't want his name on the lobby. He didn't want their Robert Dole lobby. He wanted to honor his sisters. He wanted the memory of his sisters to go on, not necessarily anything about him. And you know, that's very telling about an individual that, that they, they want the world to remember what somebody else has done versus what he has done. Um, however, no one will ever forget what the gentleman has done. And, and certainly for us at Fort Hayes, he will be part of that Hall of Fame, that first of first, um, who has allowed us to um, be distinctive and allow him to award him this honorary degree. So, so I'm just tickle pink. There's another area where I'm sure you're heavily involved. And um, Dr. Martin knows Hispanic students often are ill-prepared for college, we have to say, yeah. I think. Uh, you were, found yourself in that position 33 years ago and you wanted to address the situation to improve Hispanic students college experience. Yes. Well, you know, it's a situation that, and it's not specific to Hispanic students. When you're a first generation student, um, what you don't know, what is, you don't know. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're purple or green, whether you come from Timbuktu or from the underwater waskit weaving country. You know, it's just, you know, if you're a first generation, you're a first generation and you don't know what you don't know and you don't have the support system in your parents because they don't know and even when they want you to go, they don't know how to direct you, they don't know how to support you, et cetera. And for me, that was the case. My grandmother always said when we came to, to the United States that education was that equalizer, was the key mm -hmm. to success and not going to school was never not an option. Boy, yeah. talk about double negatives there. <laughs> English professors, you didn't hear that. Uh, <laughs> Edit that out, Jeff. Uh, yeah. um, but, but you know, the, the challenge was, how do you go somewhere where you don't know how to get there? Um, you know, you make assumptions. So you take the PSAT, for example, in the East Coast, you took the PSAT. That's something that the schools give to you. So it would be reasonable to assume that then they, they would also give you the ACT or the SAT, you know, but that's not the case. You have to sign up for them. Well, how are you going to sign up if you don't know about it? You know, how do you know to which school to go to? There's over 3,300 public institutions in the United States. Uh, we're not even counting the private institutions and certainly not even the community colleges. So how do you decide where to go? Um, even if you get to that point, how do you decide how to apply it? How do you, how do you fill out applications for financial aid or for merit scholarships? If you don't know what you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. And so um, back in Virginia, um, we had a, a governor who happened to be a, um, had been a, a uh, missionary to Nicaragua. And um, he thought that uh, the trends were going to change in Virginia. That was about um, uh, eight, nine years ago. And so he decided to provide capital, seed money, to start at that point the, the Hispanic College Institute. Uh, and so because he felt that we needed to change the tide. And so we did, and in, in Virginia it was very successful. We'll be doing the seventh Hispanic College Institute uh, this year, and, and some of the, the beautiful statistics is that um, over 80% of the students who attend the HCI go on and graduate, uh, apply to college, uh, enroll in college, and graduate from college. We have had great successes in that program in Virginia. We've had, we've celebrated kids who didn't think they could go to college who have graduated with PhDs and with masters. They're the success story because 
there was a, a pathway. And so last year, you know, as throughout the United States, as you well know, the fastest growing population in the United States are the Hispanics. Um, but they don't know how to enroll in college. So um, last year, we decided that this was something that we needed to start here in, in, in Kansas uh, to be able to address the needs of that growing population which is not going to college. And so we took a group of administrators and staff to the Virginia HCI. You know, I'd written very many of the manuals and, um, and have run, I, was, I have run the, the program for the past seven years, mm -hmm. but it's much different for me to tell you as it is for you to go see it. Mm -hmm. So we spent four days in Virginia and they saw how it worked. And so we brought it back and this year on mm -hmm. June the 22nd through the 25th on the campus of Fort Hayes State University, we will hold the first ever uh, Fort Hayes State University Hispanic College Institute. It's designed to teach first generation students how to apply to college, how to enroll in college, how to be successful in college. There will be a myriad of, of um, workshops that, that give them confidence, that tell them how to speak, that tell them how to write, that tell them how to use social media, that tell them how to use technology. There will be various opportunities for, com for competitions from talent shows to issues to actions where they address an issue in their community and create an action. Yeah. to resolve it and, and what we've seen uh, is that they, those actions actually go back to their communities and are implementable. And I would lie if I didn't tell you that I want all of them to come to Fort Hay State, but the goal is not necessarily that. The goal is so that we understand, so that this generation understand that there is a future through education that allows them to achieve the American dream. Um, the very last day we will invite the parents. Um, I think you've heard me tell the story of my grandmother who always said she wanted me to go to college. But when the time came for me to go to Duke, she said, oh, you don't need to go to Duke. You can go, why can't you stay here in Miami? And I'm going, well, Mama, I didn't get a full scholarship here. Oh, well, then you can go to the community college. Well, Mama, it doesn't make any sense. I have a full right to Duke. You know, and it was not until that priest in our parish called the priest a duke, who called my grandmother, who said, I'm going to take care of your daughter, of your granddaughter. Um, my grandmother literally packed it, me in, in her car, drove up to Duke. I remember walking, you know, driving down College Drive and seeing the Duke Chapel at the end and saying, Mama, we got to hurry up because we have to go to orientation. And she's going, the heck with orientation, you're going to go to the Newman Center, we're going to meet this priest, because if I don't approve of him, you're not staying here, you know, we're not unpacking the car. So, you know, it was that handing off, mm -hmm. and so the parents will be invited so that they understand that they have that same mechanism now here. I understand their values, I understand their concern, I understand the, that our values, especially for the girls, is that the girls don't leave the house until they leave in a white dress, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm, I understand those values, and I'm talking to them not as a president, but as a mother, as somebody who has been there. Um, you know, it was very moving to me. We went to Garden City in our SRP program about two, three weeks ago. And so I'm going back and forth between English and Spanish because there was a group, a large group of, of families who did not speak English, the parents. And I'm going back and forth in English and Spanish talking to them. And then one of the uh, parents comes up to me and says, uh, and it, it was very emotional because it was kind of the circle coming back to the starting point. This father came to me and said, you know, my daughter, it's my only daughter, and she's the light of my life, and she's the light of my eyes, and I need to protect her. And the only reason that I'm going to let her go is because now I've seen you, and I know that you're real, and you spoke about being a mother, but now she will be your responsibility. And if I need to call you at 3 a.m. in the morning, expect that phone call. <laughs> and that was very powerful because those were, those were almost verbatims, my grandmother's words, about 33 years ago to that priest. She is the light of my eyes. You protect her. And 
what a better place than at Fort Hayes State University are. We have been um, coined one of the safest campus in the United States. It's a family atmosphere. It's a place where our classrooms by design are still small, 25. You know, where you're Mike, not number one, two, three. And Jeff is Timbuk, it's not Timbuktu or that guy over there, but he's Jeff. It, it, it is, what better place than this? My dream though is that once we get this, some legs and, and people begin to come and they see the opportunities that are available through education, that we're able to flip this program. Because as I said earlier, the needs of first generation students are the needs of first generation students. It doesn't matter whether you're Hispanic or whether um, you're, you're um, Asian or whether you, are, you come from a farm. They're all first generation. There's some value systems and some needs that are specific. So why couldn't we flip it to, you know, to have a farm college institute? Because, you know, some of the, the kids, and I see it with their parents who have seven, say, eight, nine, ten brothers and sisters who for the past 150 years have made their livelihoods through the farms, who they know are going to go back to the farms, their parents are saying to them, why do you need to go to school? Well, the reason is because, as with everything, life has changed and technology has changed. And so what I say to the parents is, you know, the, the oxen and the hoe did a wonderful, wonderful job in flowing the fields. But now they're tractors. Well, the tractors are being replaced by computerized systems so that the children can sit in an office on the farm and manage the production. One of the fastest growing majors at Fort Hay State is the agriculture. We have 295 majors. Why? Because they realize that they need to learn the technology to run their farms more efficiently, to be able to produce and yield a higher yield of, of, of their crop or of their herds or uh, of their whatever. And, and so they're coming to learn that. And again, what better place? We are distinctive in nature in that, as you know, we've got over 5,585 acres at Fort Hay State University. We are not landlocked. And part of that is our farm. And whether it's the crop, division or whether it's the cattle division or whether it's the swine division, it's, it's distinctive. We're actually yesterday even looking and talking about perhaps bringing in um, uh, goats and sheep back to the farm again because they are something that is of evolution here in Kansas and we want to stay in tune with Kansas. So we're very excited about the potential that lies ahead. Can you see she's dreaming again? <laughs> Fort Hayes State University President Myrta Martin, our community connection. Thank you. Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. And the angel care nurse comes to see me once a week. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. Angel Care has helped to, to stay home. Angels Care Home Health, we serve patients.